I'm going to assume you're here because you've already watched our previous video about understanding cellular. If you haven't, I highly suggest going and watching that first so that you're not confused by anything we discuss in this video. I'll make sure I put a link to that video down in the description below. Okay, now that you understand how to use your phone's built-in diagnostic tool, let's go ahead and discuss some apps that we can use. There are three apps we're going to discuss. Cell Mapper, Network Cell Info Lite, and OpenSignal. Note that OpenSignal is the only app that supports both Android and iPhone, but it's not as robust as the other two apps we discussed, mainly because those have access to your cell network API and give us a bit more information. So while OpenSignal isn't the greatest, it's all you Apple fanboys getting your weird little walled garden. Open source software for life! Because these apps are all compiled of user-generated info, it's recommended that you use more than one app as a source of information for the best results. The first app is CellMapper. More specifically, we're going to look at their website first, mainly because this gives us a chance to see what the signal strength is going to be without ever actually having to go there. Sure, you can do this from the app, but the website's going to give you more control of what you see, and that's why it's the better choice. You want to verify what provider your cell system works with and search for that provider. AT&T and T-Mobile are the most common, but some systems use Verizon. If your system allows you to bring in your own SIM card, you may or may not find any information here that will help you. Remember, this is all user compiled data, so if you're using a smaller provider, you may not get anything from this. Once we have our provider selected, we'll want to enter the job site address to quickly find the location. You may need to scroll out a bit to get a better picture of what's going on in your area because you may or may not have a lot of information depending on the provider. You're going to notice a bunch of small squares littering your map, 90% of which will be on major roadways, people streaming music or using GPS while they're driving by, things like that. This can, however, give us an idea of what the cellular reception is going to be like in the area. If you're unlucky, you're going to see a mix of green and red all over the place. What these squares represent is the RSRP signal strength. The website actually has a legend you can view which will show you what the different colors represent. Remember, we're looking for negative 80 decibel milliwatts or lower, so bright green is really all we want to see in that area for a reliable job site. You'll also notice larger red or green circles. These represent cellular antennas in the area. The red ones are unverified towers and the green ones are verified towers. You'll mostly see unverified towers because the app uses an algorithm to estimate the tower's location, while the green towers have been verified by users. If you click on one of these towers, you may notice some cell numbers pop up. These are random user submitted data. You'll be able to see what the RSRP strength was of the cell phones that reported this data. Now, because it is randomly generated user data, that does mean that sometimes the information we get is going to be several years old and might not reflect the current RSRP strength on site, but it'll give us a general idea of what to expect. Remember, you're going to want to see a signal strength between 45 and 85 decibel milliwatts. 90 decibel milliwatts is mediocre, 100 decibel milliwatts is bad, and anything north of 120 decibel milliwatts is basically dead zone. You can view a lot of these same pieces of information using the app on your Android device. However, you're not able to change the network provider, so you'll want to make sure that the cell phone you're using uses the same network provider as the cellular access system you're installing. The app is much more streamlined in the way it gives you information. In addition to giving you the RSRP reading, it will also give you the RSRQ. The Q is for quality, which is an important bit of information. Here, we're looking for negative 5 or lower for a good quality connection. Negative 5 to negative 9 is okay, but not great. Negative 9 to negative 12 isn't good either, and anything north of negative 12 is horrible. So, if you were to combine your RSRP and your RSRQ scores, you're looking for something that comes out to negative 85 or lower. Negative 90 to negative 104 is okay, but we'd like to stick with negative 85 or lower. Mind you, these readings only count if you're physically at the job site. You'll also be able to see other cellular signals near you to see what they're reporting. You can, of course, view the map to see what others have reported, but keep in mind the app is locking you into your cellular provider information and doesn't give you the freedom to switch things up like the website does. 
Next up, we're gonna look at Network Cell Info Lite, which is another app for Android phones. Again, the app will serve us up with the RSRP and the RSRQ values, along with a handy little gauge cluster that will update every few seconds. This will be accompanied by a random neighbor's cell info so you can compare results for that area. Sometimes you'll see a neighbor suddenly drop off. That was most likely a passing vehicle that happened to latch on the tower that you're using. So you may see users constantly popping in and out as they drive by. Note that this app's gauge shows green all the way up to almost negative 100 decibel milliwatts, but we don't adhere to that train of thought. We're looking for negative 80 or lower on the RSRP and negative 5 or lower on the RSRQ. In addition to this information, we also get a speed test, which is great if the cellular system we have also uses video. Not all cellular systems have video capabilities, so this test will go largely unused. But when doing this test, we want to pay attention to the upload speed, as that's going to determine our video capability. You're going to want to see north of 3 megabits a second for reliability reasons. While technically most of the systems will operate with as little as 1 megabit per second, you're putting yourself at risk if that's all you're getting. We'll cover entry systems with video and potential bandwidth pitfalls in a future tech video, so for now I suggest just sticking with this chart. The map feature on this app is very limited and doesn't allow you to roam around like the Cell Mapper app, so it's going to go largely unused. Lastly, we come to OpenSignal, which will work on iPhones. Unfortunately, that also means it's not the most comprehensive app on our list. That's mainly because Apple doesn't allow developers access to the Cell Network API, which limits OpenSignal from giving us the information we need. It's also obvious this app isn't as detailed as the other two when the first thing we're presented with is a speed test, which is largely useless for us. What we can do with this app, however, is go over to the map section and filter the results by operator and type. They don't give us the RSRP or the RSRQ value, instead they give us just a vague color guide from green to red, with green covering about 75% of the legend bar. This is apparently their own guide, which is an amalgamation of a bunch of individual scores to give it a final rating. Unfortunately, that means jack all for us. You'll run into several job sites where open signal shows us in the green. However, if you check the RSRP and the RSRQ values, you're somewhere north of 100. Typically, these are the job sites where you have a good connection, but it's just randomly quitting on us. This is why it's a good idea to use your cell phone's network analyzer, like we showed you in the last video, to compare to what OpenSignal is telling us. Knowledge is power! The one really nice feature that this app gives us that the others somewhat struggle on is a compass to find the nearest cell tower. Mind you, this only works for the provider and doesn't work for anything you filtered in the map section. This tool is especially helpful for cellular units that utilize a directional antenna, which does give us better signal when pointed in the correct direction. Doesn't matter which of these ways you decide to test the cell reception, just matters that you're testing it before agreeing to the installation. If possible, do multiple tests throughout the day or even throughout the week. Furthermore, you can even try having your customer do this test for you. Just make sure that whatever phone they're using or you're using has the same network provider as the cell access system does that you're installing. Bonus tech tip! Those handy little signal bars on your cell phone? They're filthy liars! There's no actual standard for what these bars represent, so manufacturers just kind of make it up. It even changes between the different makes and models by the same manufacturer. So one year phone might show five bars, whereas the next year's phone might show two bars. Doesn't really make sense. What makes sense though is going out to the job site in advance and checking what the RSRP value is. If you can also get the Q value, that'd be great, but we'll focus just on the RSRP. Hopefully this video has helped you be a little bit more informed about cellular and maybe you've learned how to use some of these apps so you'll never run into a future job site that's giving you headaches, hopefully. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.